Hello everybody, my name is Thiago and in the next 20 minutes I will be talking about the most common error that every .NET developer faces, the object reference not set to instance of an object error. This is today's agenda. First, a brief technical introduction about the error and why it happens. I'm going to break down its error message in order to you understand why it happens. Then I'm going to dive into the, the four most common scenarios when we have this issue. And for each of those scenarios, we will be presented what the best practices recommend to use in order to avoid this kind of error. To finish, I will be talking about the new object design pattern and how to use it to avoid this exception. Why do we face this error? Let's break down its message. This error happens because we are trying to access properties or methods of an object that's not instantiated. The object does not have an instance. It means that we do not have any space in memory allocated to this object. In other words, we do not have a reference set for this object. So your code will try to access properties or, or methods that does not exist. Our first scenario is also the most common one. It usually happens when an object is initialized and it goes through different flows based on conditional statements. So let's say you initialize your object and this object is gonna be instantiated afterwards in one of those conditional statements. But then you fail to instantiate this object in one conditional statement and afterwards when you try to access this object, this object is going to be null. It also happens when receiving new objects from, from methods. So when we receive an object from a method, we do not validate this object and we try to access this object. We are going to receive this exception. How to avoid this? So the good practice says that we should validate the object before using it. How? Let's check on Visual Studio. Here we have a very simple console application using Visual Studio 2019 and C Sharp. In this example, we have a complex object being initialized but without being instantiated. And this object, depending on a, on a conditional statement, is going to receive the results from a method or another. This method is going to return a new object and this one is going to return a valid object. So if we run this sample code here, we are going to throw an exception of no object, see? Our object is no, and we are trying to access a property of this no object. And how do we handle those kind of situations? Here, we just need to validate if the object is no or not. So if it is very small change, if I run again the, SIP, the, the application, we are not going to have any more errors. See, the application run, and nothing, nothing happened. We didn't have any kind of result, but at least uh, an exception was not thrown as expected. Another very often situation when we face this error is when we are trying to access child objects. A child object is an object inside another object, and this usually happens when you are loading objects from a database or when you are mapping one object to another and we forget to, forget to map the child object, and then we are going to try to access this child object and this object is going to be null. So in those kinds of situations, what does the good practice recommend to do in order to avoid these problems? Uh, the good practice says that the child object must be instanti instantiated on uh, the father object constructor. How to do that? Let's go again to Visual Studio and check a practical example. Here we have an example of a complex object being instantiated 
And this complex object has a has a child object. But we are not translated in this child object and later in the code we are going to try to access a property of this child. This child object. If you will run this code, you are going to have an exception. Why? Because our child object is null. And we are trying to access a property of it. So what does the good practice say about this? We should instantiate this child object on the father constructor here. So here in this object constructor, we are going to create a new constructor here. And instantiate this child object. So if you run again the, co the code, we are, gonna, we are not going to have any more exceptions. See, this is very, very, very simple. Our third scenario is regarding collections. Having these errors when trying to access new collections is also very common, and this could happen due to many different situations. So it's basically the sum of the first and the second scenarios when we can have these errors, when we have collections not loaded from database, let's say we have an entity framework and we forget to include a collection, or when collections are not mapped, when we are using auto mapper or manual mapping and we forget to map a collection, or when you have collections going through different conditional statements, like when we initialize a collection and this collection is going to be instantiated afterwards in many different conditional statements, but then in one conditional statement we did not instantiate these collections. So afterwards, when we try to access this collection, it's going to throw the exception. Or also when we are returning new collections from methods and we do not validate this. And how can we avoid this kind of exceptions here? So it's also the sum of the first and the second scenarios. So we should validate the object before using, and when possible, we should instantiate the collections on the father's object constructors. How? Let's check on Visual Studio. This is a perfect scenario when we have this kind of issues. Here we have a list inside a complex object. This is a list of type string. And we instantiate the father's object and then we try to add a new item into the into the list inside the inside the complex object. If you will run the code here, you are gonna throw an exception because we didn't instantiate the list. So we have a, a new list here and when we try to add an item it's gonna throw the exception. And how to fix this? This is very simple, very, very, very simple. So every time that I create a new new object of this, so every time that I created the father object, I'm going to instantiate this list. If I run this again, It's not going to throw any more exceptions. Uh, another way to fix this kind of issue it would be with a validation here. We could do this as well. But in this case, it would be more kind of necessary when we have our list being returned from methods. So this is the kind of validation that we would need to do. But on, on the, the previous scenario, when we have a list inside a complex object, this is, this is enough. So every time that we, we create an instance of the father's object, we also instantiate the list. 
Our last scenario is regarding the penis injection. Who uses the penis injection have surely been to, through this scenario. It happens when you forget to set the dependent injection or do not set it correct, and when you try to access its injected object properties or methods, it's gonna throw deception. In this case, this is the off scenario. Uh, what does the best practice of how to handle this? In this case, we should always validate the injected object in the classes constructor. How? Let's check it, it out at Visual Studio. Here we have the classical dependency injection example, where we have an object, a private object, a private local object, and we have our class with an object being injected, and here we pass this object to our local one. And then when we, our code runs, we are going to try to access a method from this injected object. But let's say that here our object was not set correctly. So instead of, of receiving the, the instance of this object, we would receive an old object here. So here we would have an old object. And when you try to call this, this method, it's going to throw the no exception. In this case of the penis injection, how, how can we handle this? As I said before, we should always handle the penis injections, no validations in the object controller. So instead of that simple line of code, we are gonna validate if this object here is null. And if it's null, it's gonna throw a, a, an argument no exception here in, on your constructor. So we you remove your concern about having a no object here. So we would not, not need to validate your object here when you are running it. You would not have to do this. Why? Because you, you are going to be 100% sure that this object is going to never be no. no. As far as you are doing this validation here in the constructor, so you guarantee that your object is going to never be null. To finish, let's talk about the new object design pattern and how this could help us in order to do not have no, no object reference not set to instance of the of object exception types. This is a design pattern used to avoid most of the checks that we talked before. So with this design pattern, we would not have to do many, many validations to check if the object is new or not. We have a cleaner code as far as we do not have those validations, but this new object design pattern is not easy to be applied and it cannot be applied in every situation. It's a kind of complex design pattern to be applied and to be used. Let's check on Visual Studio how this uh, design pattern works and how, how it can help us to do not have any exceptions. When we are talking about the new object design pattern, this is how we implement this. First, we start with an interface, which has its method signatures. And then we have other, other complex objects that are going to inherit from the same interface and they are going to have their own method signature. As you can see here, we have a, a simple complex object which inherits from the same interface and it has its own method signature. So far, so good. So it's normal. We have um, uh, an object which inherits from an interface and, and this object has its own signature. But now when we are talking about the new object design pattern, here comes the trick. This is the trick part which, which handles the, the new object design pattern works. As you can see here, so far we have an object which, which is also inherited from the same interface. This object is, has a, a, an empty method 
So it has the same empty method, but it's empty here, and it has a single tone here. Let's organize it to make it better. It has a single tone stances. So why why do you need this? The new object design pattern they require a kind of fake new object instance in order to in order to work properly. So what we have here is we have a fake new object. So this is not a real new object as you can see. It's going to have its own singleton instance. It's not mandatory to use a singleton, but it's mostly used with singleton instances because as we have a uh, an object with very very few behaviors, very few. As we have an object here, with which is going to have the same behavior every time it's called, it does. We do not need to have multiple instances of this object. We only need to have one instance of this object. So that's why it usually works with a single to instance. And that's what those properties do here. When we try to get the instance of this object, it's gonna validate if this property is new. If it's new, it's gonna return a new a new instance of this object and return this. So let's see how our complex our new object design pattern working in a real life scenario. This would be our program consuming our, our our code. Let's say that this code in our side and this is the client side. So the client side wants an item of complex object and it sends uh, a string. So in our side, what we are going to do it's like it works like a factory here, factory design pattern. So in our side we are gonna validate and depending depending on the validations, we are going to return the the complex object. Here we also return the same object, but we could return different types of objects. And in the end, if every validation fails, we are going to return the, the no complex object instance. This is the, our fake new object, our no where we apply our new object design pattern. So let's see this code working. And as you can see, we have a much cleaner code in our client side. So this is the result of our code. As you can see, we we had everything is, is the same here. The unique difference is that here we have a, a real complex object instance and here we're going to have our new object instance, our fake new object instance. And we do not need to validate if they are new or not. That's that's the best part of this design pattern. We do not need any validation, so we have a cleaner code. And as you could see, the code run, okay. It didn't throw any kind of exception. And that's, that's the main point here, to have a cleaner code and to not, to not throw exceptions. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any feedback or any questions, that those are my social medias where you can find me and reach me out. Thank you for watching and see you next time.